as far as territory is concerned. One meters out from the manly line canterbury to set it up through big gavin hill taken by another kiwi tony iro broken shy continues it on mccallum will have to get away from the rut and keep these teams apart they both like to throw it around lamp very short side they work it well wasn't much room manly didn't appear to mark up lamp to pull him out of. Dummies on the inside to McCracken. Right in front of the post. They're looking for a second try. Lamb to Dimmick. Run around for Lamb. Well read. Great defense from Cliff Lyons. Good one. Bombing away with the breeze. Straight across the field. Canterbury have to play at it. Taken well by Manley. That's a good effort to hang on few dangerous signs at the moment for Manly Graham. They're not chasing at all out of the marker area. Canterbury able to stack up the numbers on the blind side and make the best of that non-marking problem that Manly have got. Very early days, but Canterbury enjoy territory and possession in this vital opening. Alexander shuffles it back to Lyons. Likewise for Cunningham. Great defence low. Broken Shire up against his old club, Manly. Well, Manly do like playing return football, and from this end of the field, they can't do it. They've got to try and slog it out a little, but they've got to run in numbers and not just get, be easy meet and get picked off, as they're doing now. They've got to support one another running twos and threes. Is there support this time for Ridge? It's not needed. McCallum keeps Canterbury away, offside from the play of the ball. A whole number of them in front of McCallum. The winner is ticket number 402. Ticket number 402. Lions will look for the sideline. In the red hat at full time at the end of the players' tunnel. Sun ducking behind clouds again. There is also a chance of some showers this afternoon. Hancock. Touch, was it by Canterbury? No, said McCallum. Alexander very wide. Six nil to the Bulldogs. Eight minutes gone. Lions with a good dummy up the middle. Lamb was the man who put bait to it. They were in trouble. Good quick play of the ball. And Tony Iro tries to hurt them out wide. Hosking. Good short ball on the fringe and good support from Alexander. Now they're starting to settle. Tuvi looked to be just in front of Lyons as that kick was put in. McCallum says no. That angle doesn't tell us a story, but Tuvi looked as though he had overrun Lyons before he had kicked it. Yeah, I think he was slightly in front of Cliffy Lyons, but that was a better passage of play from Manly. Supporting what, supporting the ball carry a little more than what they were doing. They do like to throw the ball around, but to do it, they've got to maintain this field position. They were looking better through that passage. Mitch Newton warming up with some mail from the sideline. Brokenshire is the man hobbling out there. Not hobbling his Lyons in the last couple of minutes. Lyons argues the ball was taken away incorrectly. But Canterbury come up with it. Sides very keen to use the ball and mistakes are coming. Broken shot. Not really stretching out. He seems to have a problem with the knee or calf muscle. Good one. Quickly to get out of trouble, a better kick. Starting to use that breeze. Will it stay in play? No, it won't. Back to the 20. Manley turned around. Canterbury will be trying to do this on a number of occasions to wear them down. A change has been made, Hugh. Yes, it has. We see Mitch Newton going on for Mark Brokenshire. Lamb just calling to his defensive line. Alexander. This is where Manley have to be careful. But so too to Canterbury. 
especially as far as the referee is concerned. Too much enthusiasm. Never back the distance. Brokenshire gains a breather. See if he can recover in time to get back into this game at some stage. Anything further on that injury, Hugh? Just a whack on the knee. He copped it in a tackle. Uh, accidental. There's uh, no real problem with it. He should, they're going to give him a 10-minute spell. Hosking. The penalty's going to the visitors, Manly. Canterbury. The best try-scoring record of any team this season. Manly the best defensive record. They've only conceded nine tries. This time they concede a forward pass. McCallum quick to call this one up. Well, I think that was pretty line ball. Hard call on the Manly side. Stop smiling. Our second referee in this game is Huey McGahn, who will do his best to keep Graham Lowe and I apart. Patmore. Just short of their own halfway. Cracker in amongst the forwards. And a strong run, too. Howie Carmody sitting up in the stands. All the Kiwis out there want to impress them today, and they're all doing a good job of it. The captain is here as well, Gary Freeman, with a weekend off, so a chance for a lot of Kiwis to impress with the Test Series around the corner. Bracken again, this time on the inside of Lamb. Wide to Dimmick. One of the buys of the season so far. Player who can stand and unload. Last tackle. They shift. Lamb. Off the side of the boot. Taken well by Chris Ryan. A couple of occasions now that Manly have got their line together and held on well for six tackles. Good take from Ryan. Under a bit of pressure too. Thirty out from their own line. Iroh goes as a decoy. Cunningham. Strong running up the middle. They need a little bit more support. Last tackle. Rich. This time he has plenty of time. Doolan takes his to pick it up. Pretty good effort by David Hoskins getting up there in that chasing line. Picking off that tackle there. Good work by Manly Chasers. Followed up by Jeff Toovey. Forcing an error there. Good strong defence from Toovey. Now a great run from Polamata. And a good ball to Dallas. That was a try saver. If they had not have grabbed him, he was gone all the way. Lamb. Lamb still running. Dimmick. Dimmick has support. Can he link up? No, he can't. Manly are on the rack. Canterbury, can they finish? Land Dummies gets a double. Terry Lamb puts another big print on another big match of the day in the Winfield Cup in Australia. It was started by the Polamata run, but on the Lion Red replay, Manly could not get back in time in numbers. Excellent quick play of the ball. The result, a four-pointer. Outstanding play from the Canterbury side. Dimmick standing up, causing all sorts of problems there. He's a fantastic player, but he was able to play the ball quickly. That was the key. He was able, able to play the ball quickly. They got a roll on. Terry Lamb just finished it off. But Canterbury have been playing the ball much quicker than Manly, and that's the difference at this stage. The dummy was taken. The man with the ball had to be taken. And Lamb, two tries. Crowd of around 16, maybe 17,000 here at Belmore. It has been all Canterbury. They have enjoyed the better position on the field and possession. Hill, 100% today, 50% for 93. Some of the matches we've had this year, Gavin Hill has continued to hit the woodwork on a number of occasions. The percentage should read a little higher for him. This one to give it a superb lead. And it is a superb kick to do it. 12-0.
second red match of the round. Canterbury 12, Manly nil. And we haven't been midway through this first 40, but there is a long, long way to go in this one. Lowy, we were talking prior to the kickoff in this game about maybe the difference in this match was going to be settled in the battle of the half and 5 eight. Well, that's right. And at this stage, Polamana and Terry Lamb all over Jeff Tuvey and Cliff Lyons in that department. They're able to get the ball moved on. I think Jeff Tuvey's doing a good defensive job there, but they're not acting as links between the forwards and the backs. They're not supporting the forwards. Manly playing far too much one-out football. Kerry Lamb, the expert expert in the game. There's the missed tackles there. Five on Manly already because Kerry Lamb's shifting the ball around. Palomata. Broken Shire still trying to work it with the medical staff at Canterbury to get back on. Good one. Good long kick. Ridge forced back to his 20. Now L's good. Well, here we reckon there was a 6-8 to eight point wind uh, behind the Canterbury side and I think at the moment it looks even stronger than that. Canterbury certainly got plenty of gun behind them at the moment. I think it's a little more than the wind. It is hard to handle a start like this, Hewitt. You've got to dig pretty deep on character now. No doubt at all about that, uh, Graham. Dream start for Canterbury, but Manly just have to weather the storm. I don't know if Canterbury can hold this out for the whole half, and if they can, they will soon will do. They will do it tough in the second half with the breeze going uh, up against them. Alexander standing. A try here from Manly would certainly open it right up again. They need to be the next scorers. This ball swirling around in the breeze, difficult one for Goodwin. 28 out from their own line. Canterbury can ill afford to go to sleep. That breeze could easily be worth 10 or 12 in either half to any team. The problem for Manly, Graham, is Canterbury seem to be able to get over the advantage line. There's another five or six metres. They've also gained a penalty, but they seem to be getting over the advantage line far too easy. McCallum will call Turvey back and warn about some of his teammates back chatting. Good one to settle down for the sideline and more territory to go deep. Polamata currently playing the game. Only one boot. Waiting for a trainer to get him reshot. Gavin Hill wrestles with them about 26 meters out from the manly line Newton. underrated front row in this canterbury club will more than hold his own replacing broken shire lamb patmore into the line good tackle from lions low and that was a clever pass from terry lamb then picking trying to pick the gap putting plenty of pressure on the manly defense here's a chance o'donnell on a break ryan Canterbury messed it up. To the back line they go. Good long ball from Turvey. Now Lyons with a long ball to Ellsgood. Taken by Doolan. Good crisp passing in the back line. Turvey goes without it to Hosking. It is hard work into this breeze. Alexander stops and restarts back up the middle. Last tackle against the Sea Eagles. Ridge trying to keep it low and awkward for Goodwin. Knock on. Manley's best opportunity. This is where they've got to put some points on. Well, they've been looking to try and force an error. They've been trying to do it with their defence. They weren't able to do so. Now Matthew Ridge has been able to force it through a low kick. Goodwin thinking that he might have been better served to trap that one with his foot. Be interesting to see how the Manly centres, Chris Ryan and Danny Moore, go up against the Canterbury centres, Pat Moore and McCracken. A lot of pressure on the young Manly guys. McCracken is an outstanding four. Good switch to Cunningham down the blind, but Canterbury stay awake. 11 metres out. Jones. Now it is but eight metres away, the try line. Canterbury well and truly offside out wide. McCallum allows an advantage. 
No advantage for Danny Moore. Hosking. Taking a little follow matter. He needs assistance. He gets plenty of it from three teammates. Lions goes blindside in a rush. With Tony Iroh! Great strength! Now he's short. Thought he nearly got it down. O'Donnell quickly. Canterbury all offside. Manly might settle for two points. Lions looks to get on with it. Tuvey calls him back. And Reg will waltz up. Lamb will receive a warning from McCallum about his team being offside continually. Quick change for Manly, Huey. Nick Kossef and 41 is on for John Jones. Great run from Iro. I thought he was about to plant that ball, but he was just short. It was a lot of strength by Tony Iro, but great strength also from the Canterbury defence. But I think Tony Iro, they've been using him in the wrong way up till now. He was off Cliffy Lyons' shoulder then, and that's where he is the most dangerous. Prior to this, they've been using him one off the ruck. He's easy meet there. Running out wide, he's a dangerous player. John Jones done a great job down the middle of the field so far, but I think he'd be a disappointed man coming off. Just checking with that cut to his eyebrow. Bloodbent was Kossif to be out there. Reach from next to the post. No mistake as usual. It is 12-2 Canterbury. <laughs> Twelve two, the Bulldogs have it over Manly in our Lion Red match of the round. Manly have a good recent record against Canterbury. They have won four and drawn one of their last six against the Bulldogs. Interesting spectator, rugged up sideline for Manly. Yes, Johnny Devereaux there had a good game in reserve grade. He'd be looking to get his opportunity in first grade. I don't think it'll be too long, but he, before he is out there, he's certainly a better player, I suppose than the uh, two Manly centres that are out there at the moment, without being disrespectful to the young guys. Devereaux is a seasoned international. Man from Great Britain. Anything further on John Jones, Hugh? Just a cut on the forehead, but uh, the way that it's been uh, handled, they went up with a gun and just put a, a staple in it. A nice thing to, to see. <laughs> so who's the doctor here at Canterbury, the local builder? <laughs> or Manly, I should say. Well, mate, it's part of modern science. You're not up to that over here yet. It's not the guy working on the renovations at your joint, is it? Overall possession fa favours Manly, but a lot of that has been down at their own end. In the opposition half, Canterbury by three. Tooby with a fine run. To Elsgood. Now it's Ryan going to the midfield. Finished off by Dimmick. Was he tackled? No, but Sedaris gets it. Now Dallas. Polamata. Great break from Manly, but they throw it away. Yeah, well, it was a great right break by Chris Ryan. A lot of balance here, but there's no way in the world he should have popped the pass up there. He was in heavy traffic. He should have just taken the taken the tackle. Manly were hard on attack. Now yeah. they've got to defend. It has been a trait of the games that we've covered this year where they've made an, an enormous number of breaks, and then it breaks down on that final one or two pass. Well, Chris Ryan and Danny Moore, they're the two players in the centres that probably have had a number of opportunities in games Manly have lost, but haven't really had the experience and when to win and not to pass. When to pass and when not to pass. Bridge does well under some pressure from Dallas. Hancock. Tough set of six tackles coming up from Manly. Only five metres out from their own line. A couple already gone. Alexander. That Canterbury defence looking excellent at the moment. Moving up, meeting Manly on the advantage line. They're really jamming the Manly, Manly forwards in. Manly running one out. Here's the tough set of six. Major mistake from Manly. Canterbury have it only five out. Looking for their third try. Sidaris up the middle. Jason Smith taken back to Sidaris. To Newton. Newton to Dimmick. Dimmick steps out of one and two. Can't get it down. It needed to go one more pass. But not that pass. They let it slip and they missed their third try. 
Well, great pressure once more from started with the Bulldogs defense. It was great defense. Manly running one out, forced the error off David Hoskins, managed to get the ball back, then let themselves down, unfortunately, with that pass. It was that had Troy written all over it. Only had to be a an easy ball, and Patmore was in the corner. Now Hosking is headed to the blood bin, as is Sidaris. The game comes to a halt. As the referee and both clubs wait for some replacements. Jones gives the thumbs up to say he's ready to go back. Maybe this might give Manly some time to settle down. Playing one out football, that's why that error uh, came upon them. They've got to start playing running twos and threes. And the changes are, Huey. Robert Ralph in 40 for Canterbury and John Jones. Ralph to the pack. Be interesting to see who hooks for Canterbury. Ralph has gone straight to the front row. An unfamiliar role for him. Turvey with the scrum feed. And quickly out for the Sea Eagles. Canterbury very close to being offside from that scrum. The scrums favour Manly 2-1. Canterbury are really trying to move up quickly in this 20 metre danger zone and they are forcing mistakes from the Sea Eagles. Well, that's, you can't run one out in this area, just as Manly are doing there. The Bulldogs are moving up quickly, as you say, and they're just snapping off anything at all that Manly are trying to apply. Manly's goes to move the ball around, having the likes of Tony Oro, the big fellas hitting the ball on the fringe, not down the middle of the field. Last tackle against Manly. Rich. Throws it very wide to Lyons. Lyon gets a kick in. Down a good one. 